So I've nearly finished casting on a new sock. So starting at the top of the sock and that's where you have the ribbing on the cuff. So I've just got the last few steps of setting up the ribber here to do. Just moving that round, it uh, enables me to get the last ribber needles onto the ribber, which is this bit sat over the top. So on a sock machine you've got cylinder needles and ribber needles and the cylinder needles are these ones here which are upright and they do all your knit stitches and on the ribber they form the stitch from the other direction hopefully you'll be able to see it so that makes a purl stitch. So the top of this sock is going to be knit one, purl one rib. And when I've got all these needles in, I just have to hook the working yarn onto them. And then I'll be ready to crank. So I'm just using my dentist pick here to find the thread that's in between the ribber and the cylinder. And that will prevent there being any weird loops at the top of the sock. Okay, that should be good to go. So my row counter is at zero and I want to do 60, 60 rounds of ribbing. So hopefully you're able to see that as the yarn carrier travels around, it's passing new yarn through each of the needles, which has a little latch. So what it does is it grabs hold of the new yarn and then pulls it through the existing stitch on the needle. I'm at about 20 rounds of ribbing now, just so you can get an idea of how quick this is compared to hand knitting. Right, that looks like 55. When I've finished this ribbing, I'm going to change colour, so I just need to slow down and be ready to switch yarns. Okay, 56, 57, 58, 59. Um, yeah, so realistically, I think I've got to do one more with the pink and then change over. Hopefully it will become clear why I'm doing that. Okay, so that's 60 rounds of ribbing.
Right, let's carry on, shall we? So, you just saw me finishing my 60 rounds of ribbing. I have now removed this brass collar from here, which enables me to get at the cylinder needles because I want to switch to stocking stitch and that means replacing ribbon needles with cylinder needles. So I've already done the half that you can't easily see. And I'm now working on these. So the cylinder has 72 slots for 72 needles. So my socks will have 72 stitches around. And the ribber plate has 36 slots for 36 ribber needles. So that's why I can do knit one, purl one rib. It means I can also do three by one rib, but I can't do things like two by two because that would require um, more slots on the ribber. What's quite nice is to do a little bit of one by one rib at the top of the sock. You need one by one um, right at the top to prevent it from unravelling. If you know anything about a tubular cast on, it's very similar to that. Um, and then you can switch to three by one rib and carry that down all the way down the sock. That's quite nice. But for this sock, I've just done quite a long, deep one by one rib and now I'm switching to stocking stitch for the main body of the sock. Because I'm about to use a variegated yarn and I think it will look prettier that way. Okay, so that's another quarter of the ribber needle switched around. I just have to move this around again. You'll see this plate moves around. Oh, and I forgot to... I just realised I forgot to um, think about what I was doing with the yarn change, but I'm just going to have to... I'll deal with that when I come to it. Never mind. Right, so I've got nine more ribbon needles to switch out for cylinder needles. You may be able to hear a very dramatic game being played in the background there. counts all the way up to 19 successfully and then reverts back to 16 instead of 20. I'm not sure why. <laughs> oh yeah, you found a thing. Okay, so I've now replaced all of my ribbon needles with cylinder needles. Um, as I said, I, I don't know if you can see that, but this is the new colour coming and I forgot to account for it as I carried on cranking around. So the colour change isn't going to be exactly where I want it to be, but oh, it doesn't matter. Right, so I'm just going to take the ribber off straight away. Normally I would crank it around so it was a more comfortable position to remove it, but because I've got to be wary of that colour change, I just want to get this off straight away. Uh, 
and then I get a chance to have a look at my ribbing. Okay, that looks good. All right, okay, cool. I thought I felt it go a little bit. You can sometimes feel if you get um, a run, a dropped stitch, but I think it's all right. I'll show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so there, that's the ribbing. And this is the color change about to happen. So after all that fussing about the colour change, I decided to just let it happen when it happened. Um, with the sock machine, if you just do a square knot, you can just carry on, it'll knit through a knot no problem. So there's a knot down there somewhere, it's fine. So I decided to do 50 rounds of uh, stocking stitch with my other colour and then, um, then I'm going to start the heel but before I do that I'm going to um, do what's described as the heel narrowing so I have a little um, lever on here and that's going to change well, it effectively changes the tension, but what it does physically on the machine is it changes the height of the cams, which direct the movement of the needle. So it means it will make the needle move less and make a smaller stitch. Okay. adjusting the weight as well before it hits the floor sorry you can't see that I'm just gonna have to take my word for it that there's stuff going on below the table two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yarn nearly dropped off the table seven eight nine and then I am going to correctly time colour change because I want to go back to the pink for the heel let me just show you what's happening there if I can Yeah, I can't quite get that to show. Yes, I can. Okay. So I was saying about the square knot before. So you just tie the other yarn onto the old yarn and it will just feed through the machine without me having to feed it all through. Right, so one more round. Now... Turn that back so you can see what's happening here. So the heel is worked um, as a short row heel. So what I'm doing here is lifting the back half of the needles out of work. So these won't get caught by the cams as, the, as it goes around. So these just won't do anything. You'll see that quite soon. Also putting the heel spring on, um, that's something at the top which will keep um, the tension on the yarn as the yarn carrier moves backwards and forwards. Right, ready to start the heel. So as you can see there that's just pulled the yarn around but the needles didn't do anything. I just need to get that colour change. I'm going to have pink heel like my cuff. Okay. 
So the short rows worked by lifting one needle out of work for every pass or every short row, which shortens the row. So I keep doing that on the left and the right until a defined point where it's as narrow as I want it to be. And then I'll start widening again. Okay, this is a heel fork. As you start making this kind of the short row, um, so there's a weight hanging off the bottom of the work down below here, which holds it all in tension. As this changes shape, the weight won't be evenly distributed and this will not be held on the needles anymore. It will start jumping off and causing problems. So what you do is you hang an additional weight on this part. So that's what I'm going to do now. These are the super duper weights. They look really heavy. You'd think that the, it would uh, rip the fabric, but it doesn't. So I said a little bit about changing the tension, but I didn't really explain why I was doing it. Um, the heel is one of the high wear areas on a sock, as you know. So we do it at a tighter tension to hopefully make it a little more hard wearing. Right, that heel weight needs adjusting again now. Okay, I've now got to the narrowest point, so I've got only a few needles down here and most of the needles up. So I want to now start widening the heel. This is done in a slightly different way. You know when you're hand knitting and you do short rows, you have to have some way of wrapping the stitch. When you're decreasing, or narrowing, or whatever you want to call it, um, it automatically wraps the stitch because of the direction that the yarn is going. But when you uh, widen it again, you have to do something to ensure that you wrap the stitches on the way up. So what I'm doing is a technique called two down, one up. So when I go past, I'm going to push two needles down, and I'm going to lift one up on the other side and that has the effect of wrapping the stitches. And that way we don't have any unsightly holes in our, in our heel. This technique also makes a really neat looking heel, which is I don't like. There are other ways of doing this, but this is the quickest method I know and neatest. As you can see, it won't be long till I'm back out to the halfway point and that will be the heel finished. So you get an appreciation for how fast it is compared to hand knitting. In terms of gauge, by the way, I always, I always had the impression that these machines would do a tighter gauge of sock but I've done some measurements and it's really the same so your hand knit socks 
are in no way inferior to something made by this machine. It really does the same thing, just quicker. And modern sock machines are based off of one of these. It's just automated instead of having a human lifting and raising all these needles and cranking it round. But the, ascent, the essence of the machine is no different. All I'll say is the person who invented the latch needle is an absolute genius. nearly done with this now so actually I want another I want another color change don't I right so this heel is finished so I bring my yarn carrier back to here when it's here I am able to lower all of these needles if it gets too close and they start getting picked up by the cams and then you can't move them so it's really important to remember at this stage that this is where I put the needles down. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to do that. Okay, they're down. I've still got the pink yarn here. I'm just going to take it to that halfway point where the heel ends. I've taken the heel spring off and then I'm just pulling that yarn through. I'm not sure if you can really see that. And here comes the main body colour. The other thing I need to do is put the tension back to the setting I had it on the cuff just for the main foot part. So that we're back to knitting round and around. I now want 50 rows on the foot. That's 49. I'm just preparing for another colour change because then it's time to do the heel. I'm not going to film, uh, not the heel, the toe. I'm not going to film the toe because it's worked in the same way as the heel. But I will show you the ending of the sock. Okay, so I have now worked my toe in the same way as the heel. Um, if you are a hand knitter of socks, that probably is a little bit confusing because we don't tend to knit short row toes. But I think hopefully it will become clear in a moment. So again, back to this midpoint. This is the point where I can put all the cylinder needles down. But instead of changing the colour for one of my sock colours, I've put some... I've joined some waste yarn on here because this is the end of the sock. Oh, 
Um, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to crank it around to that midpoint again. Okay, I'm taking the heel spring off so I don't need that extra tension on there and I'm going to pull through the, the yellow uh, waist yarn. You'll see it in a moment. And I've got a really long thread of pink here but that's a good thing and I need it. Right, and the last thing I'm going to do is adjust the tension back to the normal setting. It will just be ready for the next sock, and I won't accidentally start it off at the tight tension that we do on the heel and the toe. Okay. Now this waist yarn. does not form part of the sock but it's important to stop it from unravelling in just a moment. Okay so it's about to come off the machine. I've just cut the yarn so when that runs out the needles will go down as normal but you'll see there's no yarn to form a new stitch so it will just come off. Give me a second to lay that out and I'll talk you through the finished sock. So here is the finished sock off of the machine. Here is the cuff, all that ribbing that you saw. This is the cast on dolly, which I didn't show you this time. And the yellow here is the waist yarn that I used to cast on with. So I've just snipped through lots of these, so that should just pull off really nicely now. Okay, and I get rid of these waist threads. You will see that the top of the sock has a lovely neat edge. So it doesn't unravel. Okay. So then there's the body, there's the heel. It's a bit messy here because of the colour change, but the um, threads will be inside there and I'll be able to sew them in. But you can see that lovely neat line from the short rows. And then here is the toe. Worked in the same way. And there's where I cast off. So hopefully it's clear that when I unravel this yellow waist yarn, I'll be popping all of these live stitches onto some knitting needles. And then I will be able to do a kitchener graft to close the toe. Like so. And that's on the top of the foot. And that's it. Now I've just got to make another one to match. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for watching. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments. I'll be really happy to answer them. Okay. Bye.